My name is Joshua Bardwell, and I'm a wireless engineer with Connect802. Connect802 is a ruckus wireless reseller, as well as a wireless network designer, implementer, and troubleshooter. I'd like to take a few minutes to walk you through the Ruckus Wireless Indoor AP product line as it currently stands. I hope that this video will help you if you're trying to decide which Ruckus AP is right for your deployment. Uh, the Ruckus product line is pretty diverse, but it does break down into pretty clear categories, and usually for a given customer, there's a right AP that fits best for their situation. As I go through this discussion, I'm going to be showing you the product pages from the Ruckus Wireless website, and I do encourage you, as you're doing your research, to go to these pages yourself. If you go to the library page, you can actually download the data sheet for each AP, where you can get a lot more in-depth information and sort of positioning information for each of these APs. We'll start with the discussion of the ZoneFlex R300. This is the only 802.11n AP that we're going to be looking at in the lineup, and it is basically the bottom tier of the Ruckus Indoor APs. If you are deploying an 802.11n AP today, you probably have a pretty good reason, and this would be the AP that you would pick. But it should pretty much go without saying that most people who are doing a rollout today are going to be rolling out 802.11ac. Even if 802.11n could meet your needs from a sort of technology perspective, uh, I think from a product lifecycle perspective, it wouldn't make sense to put n in today. I think we can expect to see a lot of these products be end of life before you would be ready to do another refresh. So it makes the most sense to put in 802.11ac products today, unless you just have a very compelling reason to put an n product in. That being said, let's take a look at this product specs. And in order to do that, we'll go to this spreadsheet that I've made, which lays out the major specs for each of these APs side by side to make it easier to compare them. You can, of course, get the full specs from the data sheet, as I said earlier. The R300 is a 2x2, two 2-stream two, two MIMO AP. It has up to 64 antenna patterns per band, with up to 4 dB of beamflex antenna gain and 10 dB of beamflex interference rejection. Now let's go back and break these specs down a little bit to make sure we have a full understanding of what they mean. The more MIMO streams an AP supports, the more throughput it's going to be able to achieve. And in general, we could, we could think of MIMO streams as multiplying the throughput of the AP. So if a single stream AP can get 100 megabits per second of throughput, a two stream AP can be thought of as getting 200 megabits per second of throughput, a three stream 300 meg, and so on. In reality, we find that we don't just get a, a linear multiplication of the data rate because in some cases we can't get additional MIMO streams. So it's not a guarantee that if you have a two stream AP that every client will be able to achieve two streams in the real world. That's a function of the environment and the multipath in the environment and so forth. But also it's usually the case that the additional MIMO streams have a lower signal to noise ratio than the first MIMO stream. So you may get 100 megabits per second out of your first MIMO stream, but only 75 megabits per second out of your second MIMO stream, and maybe less out of your third MIMO stream. Again, that's all a function of the environment. But the short version is that more MIMO streams gives you more potential for top end throughput. So in general, more MIMO streams is better. Additional antenna patterns. So the, the Ruckus APs have the beam flex antenna system, which allows the AP to dynamically adjust its antenna pattern in real time, basically allowing it to aim the pattern at a client device and increase the antenna gain in the direction of that client device. Almost as if you had a directional antenna on a gimbal that was able to wheel around, except it's not mechanical, it's electrical, and it happens very, very fast in real time with each packet transmission and reception. The more antenna patterns an AP supports, the more finely it is going to be able to home in on one client device and reject signals from other client devices. Okay, so the additional antenna patterns are a very good thing, especially in higher density deployments where you may have many client devices talking at the same time. They really improve the ability to reject out of band noise or, or co channel interference. This one has 64 per band, but we can see that some of the higher end APs have far more. We also list the power draw here. Now, that's going to help you if you're provisioning for PoE, but that's probably not a, a big spec that people are going to be super interested in. We've got it listed here, though. 
here's the max data rate for this AP, 130 megabits per second at 20 megahertz or 300 megabits per second at 40 megahertz. You want to be aware that your real throughput is going to be in the range of about 50 to 65 percent of that, maybe as much as 75 percent of that in the real world. Assuming you have enough signal strength, that's where you're going to see that top out. And then the transmit power is listed here, and if you actually compare across the board, you'll see that the transmit power is pretty much the same. The other thing to keep in mind with regard to the transmit power is that is the max transmit power, but in the 5 gigahertz band. Depending on the channel that the device is on, it may need to restrict its output power to less than the maximum. So I wouldn't make a purchasing decision based on this transmit power number alone, or even really seriously consider it. There are other dominant considerations that are going to help you make your purchasing decision. Nevertheless, here's the number. The maximum concurrent stations that the AP will support is a function of the processor on the AP and its ability to sort of keep track of the data and process the data coming from these devices. And it's important to note that that is independent of the data rate that the devices are demanding. So if I have 256 stations on this AP and they are all completely idle and not sending a bit of data, that's still the most stations the AP will not accept any more associations after that point. It's usually going to be the case that these numbers do not limit our overall performance, but it may be the case in some very high density deployments that we would need to take this into consideration. If you were designing for something like a stadium or maybe a very high density auditorium or a conference hall, you might get cases where you would have a lot of clients associated with the AP, but not really doing anything, and this may become the limiting factor. Anytime you have clients that are doing a lot of traffic, though, you're probably not going to be able to handle 256 clients on a single AP just because the throughput they would achieve would be so low that it would, it would not be acceptable to you. Each AP also has a max voice over IP devices specification. Uh, and the reason that is different from the max concurrent stations is because voice over IP conversations are very intensive on uh, latency. The AP has to really prioritize them, and it just can't handle as many as regular data. And we can see that the max voice over IP devices is 30 for this AP, and it has a single Ethernet port. Some of the APs you will see later have two Ethernet ports, and we'll talk about what that's all about. The ZoneFlex R310 is Ruckus's entry-level 802.11 AC access point. This is the uh, most cost-effective AC access point that you could put in. Uh, if you're very budget-sensitive, this would be the place to go. The R310 has very similar specs to the R300. In fact, basically identical specs in almost every way, except that it supports 802.11 AC, so it has more throughput capacity. It does support up to 80 megahertz channels throughput up to 867 megabits per second, uh, whereas the R300 only supports up to 40 megahertz channels. Now that may or may not be a specification that will apply to your situation. There are many situations where it is not optimal to use wider channels and you get actually better overall network capacity using narrower channels due to reduced co-channel interference between APs. We can also see that the R310 only supports up to 100 concurrent stations compared to 256 for the R300. And the reason for that is that 802.11 AC is more processor intensive, but the R310 hasn't really gotten a processor upgrade in order to keep it cost effective. It's hard to imagine a scenario where that would cause anybody to choose the R300 over the R310 though. Although if you really stretched your imagination, you might could come up with one. The next AP in the product line is the R500. And if we look at the specs for the R500, we'll see that they are very similar to the R310. 2x2 MIMO, 64 antenna patterns per band, 40 dB of antenna gain, and 10 dB of interference rejection. So what's the difference? And the difference is that the R500 has a faster processor inside, which means that practically speaking, you will achieve higher real throughput. Even though we look at the spec sheet and we can see that all the specs are kind of similar, notice that the R500 supports up to 500 concurrent stations, whereas only 300 on the R310. And what that means is that even if you only have 20 or 30 concurrent stations, you're going to get better throughput and better performance out of the R500 compared to the R310. So don't let the fact that these specs are very similar fool you into thinking that this AP is not better. Obviously it is. 
The R500 also has two Ethernet ports, and that's usable in a number of different ways. One of the Ethernet ports, of course, is used for uplink and PoE. The other Ethernet port can be used to daisy chain a device, like maybe a security camera or, well, just really anything you like. Now we get to the R600, and now we're really starting to get up there in terms of performance in the Ruckus product line. The R600 is a three-stream AP, so now you've got an additional MIMO stream. And I do want to point out that, you know, it's not always guaranteed that you're going to get all the MIMO streams that the AP or the client can support. However, the more MIMO streams the AP and the client can support, the more likely it is that they will find additional MIMO streams. So if you put the R500 and the R600 in the same environment, the R600 is, may not get three MIMO streams, but it's going to be more likely to get two MIMO streams than the R500. So it's always better to have more MIMO streams up to a point, I'd say three MIMO streams is always better than two, even if you don't actually get three MIMO streams in practice, you're more likely to get two. And four MIMO streams is better than three, because again, many client devices don't even support four MIMO streams. Many client devices don't even support three MIMO streams. But if the AP can get four MIMO streams, it's much more likely to be able to pick two out of the environment Whereas if the AP only supports two, it doesn't have as much to choose from and it's not going to be as good at extracting those MIMO streams in practice. The R600 has an enhanced Beamflex antenna array with up to 512 antenna patterns. It's going to be able to be more selective about where it sends its traffic. And what this is going to translate to, into is increased overall network capacity under heavy load. When you have many client devices throughout the site transmitting at the same time, the ability of the APs to selectively talk just to those clients without co-channel interfering with each other is a function of, among other things, the number of antenna patterns per band. So more antenna patterns per band results in better network capacity in a heavily loaded co-channel interference environment. The R600 has 6 dB of Beamflex antenna gain compared to 4 dB for the R500 and the other APs, and up to 15 dB of interference rejection. So that's a function of the better Beamflex antenna array. And it goes up to 1300 megabits per second at 80 megahertz, which is a function of the additional MIMO streams. Again, as I said before, you may not be running 80 megahertz in your environment. That may not be the best configuration for you, but if that's what you're looking at, it will offer a higher top end. 500 concurrent stations, 30 voice over IP devices, and two ethernet ports, same as the R500. Next we come to the R700, and the R700 is a real step up from the R600 in terms of performance and capacity. The R700 is a three-stream device, but it has a much more sophisticated Beamflex array with more than 3,000 patterns per band. Same specs here in terms of antenna gain and interference rejection, but the increased selectivity of this antenna array is going to mean that the R700 has much better performance in higher density environments. The R700 really shines compared to the R600 when you have more than about 30 to 50 clients per AP. If you have less than about 30 to 50 clients per AP, there's not as compelling a case to pay the additional money for the R700 over the R600. But if you're in an environment like a classroom environment, like an auditorium, or especially as you get into environments like stadiums and conference halls, the R700 really shines. So if you're a school looking to put APs in your classrooms, the R700 is the way to go. If you're a library looking to put in uh, public access Wi-Fi, the R700 is the way to go. Uh, in an office environment, you would really need to look at your assumptions about user density and especially take rate, because you may have 50 users or 60 users within the coverage area of an AP, but then you have to ask how many users are active at any given time versus idle users. And in many office environments, there's not even going to be, there's only going to be maybe 20 users within the coverage area of an AP, at which point the R600 may make more sense. Finally, we come to the R710. And the R710 is very significant because it is the industry's first 802.11ac wave 2 wireless access point. Now, if you're not familiar with wave 1 versus wave 2, it boils down to this. 802.11ac was rolled out in two different waves. The first wave had some core functionality, like increased data rates and so forth. 
And then the second wave had a few other higher end features that were a little harder to implement and standardize. And instead of making us wait for the whole meal to get cooked, they sent out the first half of the meal and they said, hold on, while you're eating that, we're going to work on the second half of the meal. Wave two is the second half of the meal. The main features in wave two that are going to be relevant to you are transmit beam forming. Now, if you are a Ruckus customer, you know about beam forming because the Ruckus Beam Flex Array has done beam forming for years. Transmit beam forming is an 802.11ac standard way of beam forming. Now, it's not as sophisticated as Ruckus beam forming. Ruckus beam forming has up to 3,000, 4,000 antenna patterns, right? 802.11ac transmit beam forming is not as sophisticated as that, but it may offer as much as 3 dB of additional downstream signal strength and Ruckus certainly will implement it in its Wave 2 products. You know, we all like a little more downstream signal strength, wouldn't we? The other Wave 2 feature that is really significant is called multi-user MIMO. Multi-user MIMO means that instead of sending all of your MIMO streams to one device, you can split those MIMO streams in parallel between many different devices. So, for example, if you have a four-stream AP, Many client devices out there only support one or two MIMO streams. They just don't support the additional streams. The AP could send four different single MIMO streams to four different devices, making the most of the available airtime instead of sort of wasting it on the fact that the client can't keep up. So MU MIMO is potentially going to offer a huge advantage in very high density environments where the AP has to talk to a lot of clients at once but not very fast. Uh, sending four streams to one client gives you a very high peak throughput, you know, 1.3 gigabits per second. But most clients don't need that much throughput. And you'd much rather be able to send four different clients a smaller stream than one client a big fat stream, or even worse, one client a small stream and everybody else just has to wait. So MU MIMO is a really big feature for high density deployments and it's supported by the ZoneFlex R710. But don't celebrate just yet. MU MIMO has to be supported by client devices as well. And so even if you put the R710 in your environment today, you probably are not going to be able to start using MU MIMO until client devices update their drivers and their firmwares. And for some client devices, this probably will never happen. Uh, if you have some older smartphones out there that don't support MU MIMO today, they're probably not going to support it ever, right? So this is a feature that will offer more advantage in the future than it does today, but it's definitely exciting that there's an AP available from Ruckus that does support these features as soon as client devices are ready to support them. Let's take a look at the spec sheet next. The R701 is a four-stream AP. That's the most streams of any AP that Ruckus sells. It has the most sophisticated Beamflex antenna array with up to 4,000 antenna patterns per band and 6 dB of downstream antenna gain and up to 15 dB of interference rejection. Again, don't let the fact that these numbers are the same for all three of these APs fool you into thinking that the real world differences between them don't exist. These numbers are, are very limited in the ability to describe the full effect of the more sophisticated Beamflex array on each of these APs. And the more sophisticated array on each of these APs as you go up the line, it's going to give you better real-world throughput in more congested and contentious environments. Well, okay, there's a brief rundown of the ZoneFlex indoor product line. These are the kind of things that we consider when we are deciding which AP is right for each of our customers. Uh, we hope you'll contact us with any questions you may have. Here's our contact information and our website. And we look forward to helping you with your network design whatever your needs may be.